I'll talk about the beating heart of the Corvette, the engine. In a world quickly migrating to forced induction, small displacement engines, we are bucking the trend and continuing to advance the development of our famous small block V8. There's simply no substitute for the immediate responsiveness and the sound emanating from this technological masterpiece. We will be the only remaining naturally aspirated V8 in the segment. We are calling it the LT2, and its displacement remains 6.2 liters. But that's about all that is carryover about it. With the performance exhaust, it was recently SAE certified at 495 horsepower and 470 foot-pounds of torque, making this the most powerful Corvette Stingray ever. For the first time, the Stingray comes with a standard, integrated, engine-mounted, dry sump lube system. The system has three separate scavenging pumps and a very compact reservoir mounted on the front of the engine. The low-profile oil pan reduces mass and lets us mount the whole engine lower in the chassis than we've ever done before. The oil cooler has even more capacity. The bottom line is this a new lube system has been absolutely bulletproof during our testing at tracks like VIR, the Nürburgring, and our own Milford Road course. That engine is paired to our first eight-speed dual-clutch transmission, or DCT. This features a very innovative electronic transmission range selector, a masterpiece of engineering art and design that will become a benchmark for the industry. The DCT provides lightning fast shifts and excellent power transfer. Simply put, the DCT shifts gears faster and better than any human can. It offers a spirited and connected feel of a manual and the premium driver driving comfort in an automatic. It truly feels like you're getting the best of both worlds. We've set the DCT up with a very low first gear to leverage our additional traction at the rear to get the car off the line very quickly. Gears two through six are closely spaced and keep the engine near the power peak on the track. Its tall seventh and eighth gears make for easy long distance cruising with low mechanical stress and excellent fuel economy. The LT2 engine and the DCT in combination with this new architecture make the new Stingray a very quick car. We are seeing zero to 60 times under three seconds. You heard that right. Z51 Stingray under three seconds. That puts the Stingray in the company of some of the world's quickest cars and in our own history, only beaten by our 755 horsepower ZR1. I think a lot of the leadership thought we want to go to mid-engine because it's cool, you know, because most exotic sports cars in the world were mid-engine, but actually we were doing it because we felt like we were reaching the limit of our performance capability and the architectures that we had. And so we had to do something to move that forward. When I first heard that they were going to make the new Corvette mid-engine, really it was a, a game changer. We're bordering on 70 years of this vehicle. So you have this lineage to it that you have to maintain, but you also have to be willing to grow and take it further. With the mid-engine attributes, you'd have the, the rear weight bias from the engine for better acceleration, performance, and track times, as well as the low forward cowl for excellent visibility and the lighter front, which really makes the car fun to drive. Corvette is an emotional driving experience. No matter who you are in life, when you get into a Corvette, you're a superhero. We needed a bespoke transmission, custom designed for this car, because we have engines that produce massive amounts of torque, so the DCTs that are on the shelf wouldn't stand the Corvette duty cycle. Is you've got a shaft that has your even forward gears, two, four, six, eight, and your odd gears, one, three, five, seven, 
and you can simultaneously be disengaging one shaft while you're engaging the other one. So it's quicker than a human being could shift a manual transmission. This way you get the lightning fast, less than 100 milliseconds shift when you need it. Driver mode, which is what most people are used to as tour, sport, track, and weather. Um, my mode and Z mode are actually just two additional modes. Tour, we look at it as a balanced mode that's good at everything. Sport is a little bit more catered toward the spirited driving. Track is all about the response and how the vehicle handles around maximum cornering, maximum acceleration, and maximum driver feel of the road. What my mode and Z mode will allow you to do is for the driver to configure it themselves. The design intent of Z mode is for a single use case. You could set up Z mode for that curvy road that you go on every day on the way to work. Click on Z mode, do your curvy road, and then go back to my mode and that's your day.